took the women's basketball team to UConn, the Grammar State University Lakers. He scored. Look what he made some noise. I need you to keep that same energy. Give us that same energy as I bring to the mic our fearless leader. Give it up for our director of athletics, Mr. Paul Bryant. team, they have been through a lot of adversity, but in spite of the adversity, they have excelled on the court and they have excelled in the classroom, but this tournament started with us beating Alcorn State here on last Tuesday, and then they had to go into a hostile environment. They went into a hostile environment in Houston where we had to play Texas Southern, and uh, I wanted to avenge that loss that we had in the championship last year. And then it was the Bayou Classic on the hardwood with Southern. And as you know what the outcome is, because today we are dancing. We are dancing in the NCAA tournament. So I would like to say welcome, congratulations to my women's basketball team, and go Tigers. It doesn't matter who we play, we gonna go out there and win this game. Good luck. got a chance to watch the women's basketball game the following day. And as usual, I was impressed. Uh, I had the opportunity to be part of the guest earlier this year for the Lady Texas basketball game. And the whole time I was doing that game, all I was thinking was, these girls are bigger than our girls. That's what I think the Tommy and Monique might get in some pain if they had a shot. So I'm looking for y'all to get this thing. And the person who is responsible for so many of the big things that are happening at Grambling State University now and in the future is here to bring you greetings. Put your hands together and welcome our president, Mr. Rick Gallo, Jr.
Y'all give it up one time for the world famed Grammar State University Tiger Martin Band. 
You know how big the world is? That's world renowned. A correction earlier, um, one of our assistant coaches, that is Cyrex. Fabulous deal. Let me make sure that I get that out there. Now, Grammar State University has a history of greatness and a legacy of greatness. And a lot of the people responsible for that are legends. Some have already gone home, but some of us are here before us. And I would be remiss if I didn't recognize one of the legends that I see in the audience tonight. The way the basketball community recognizes Coach Pat Summer for all of the great things that she did to me in women's basketball is gorgeous. And I got a chance to see her on the TV, but that is another path that meant a lot to women's basketball, specifically in the SWAC, but more specifically at Grambling State University. This lady is responsible for the legacy of greatness that is women's basketball here at Grambling State University. So we have got to recognize our own living legend, ladies and gentlemen, former coach Patricia Cage Mills, the living legend. Coach, you know I love you. You know I wasn't going to let you get out of here. You know that, baby. You know that. All right. Coming to the mic right now. It's to make sure that everyone saw uh, exactly what the women would experience. So coaches, please, we will present this on behalf of SWAC Conference. We would like to present you with the Women's Basketball Tournament Champion and earning that trip to the Big Dance to Grambling State University Women's Basketball Program. She's like the Swiss Army knife for basketball players. Whatever you need done, she can do it. And she's been one of my favorite players since the first time I saw her. And one of the things I love most is she plays the whole game, start to finish, win or lose, with that big, beautiful smile. Y'all give it up for the real deal, my niece and me. to the mic right now, we've got the man who's responsible for the X's and the O's and the motivation. One time for the head coach, Mr. Freddie Bird.
there. When I came here three years ago, um, we back up even further than that. When I came, what I've known about Grambling's basketball has been well over 20 to 30 years. Um, a lot of y'all don't know, but Grambling's basketball was winning championships well before UConn started winning. And uh, so the tradition of winning has always been here. Uh, unfortunately, 19 years ago was the last time we went to the NCAA tournament and Coach Rusty Ponton took us there. But prior to him, prior to him, this lady sitting on this front seat right here dominated women's basketball in the SWAC. They were playing at a time when the SWAC wasn't being allowed to even go to the NCAA tournament. And she was beating people all over the country, all over the country. But at that time, y'all got to understand, they weren't allowing HBCUs to play in the tournament. So now that we have gotten to that stage, we're not stopping. We're not stopping. We don't care who they put us up against. You know, we don't care who they put us up against. We started with 15, now we're down to nine. But we don't care. Our motto is next person up. This team has gone through a lot this year. You all might not never know. They come here tirelessly when they're upset with us because we're practicing at 5 a.m. in the morning and they hate it. But now they see where all that hard work went to us. Uh, there was a patch in there, a three or four month patch in there where we dealt with 15 deaths between family members, cousins, grandparents, and where we had to rotate lineups in and out. We had people in and out of practice. We didn't really know what we were gonna have throughout the season. But through it all, God has graced us, God has blessed us, and now we're standing here with another opportunity to go and shock the world and say, why not Grammar? University, we've been recognizing brave students like you for nearly 150 years. Baseball, you up next. I know y'all got it, baby. 
So let's get ready for the tournament selection show. And when they show Grambling, we want them to feel us all around the world. If y'all with me, let me hear you say G thing. Well, I think you saw firsthand in our championship game on Sunday in the Southeastern Conference Tournament Championship the value of Tierra McCowan. Uh, she got in foul trouble early, uh, very early. I had to sit her the entire first half, and uh, you know we got down 11 at half, and that, and we really never made that up. And uh, just what she, how she impacts the game on both ends of the floor, is is really big for us. And so. Uh, I think that's an upset. I mean, the kids had, you know, 20 something double doubles over the course of the season. She's a double double machine, averaging almost 18 and 14 and a half a game. I mean, those stats are astounding in the Southeastern Conference. Plus, she's co player, co defensive player of the year. Victoria, I'd venture to say there's not another player in the country that improved her shooting percentage almost 13 percentage points over last year. To do it in this league when she gets everybody's best defensive game plan, everybody's best defender, and she's had that now for four straight years. But to do it in this, at this level in this league, I mean, enough said. I mean, the kid is, I'd like to know who else in the country has done that. It's certainly been sensational for you and your team's been great as well. Wish you all the luck in the world and the NCAA Women's Championship. Vic, thanks for being with us. All right, praise the Lord and go dogs, Reese. Go dogs, go funky dogs, and go watch the women's selection show right now. We'll see you in an hour. You're watching the ESPN Tournament Challenge Marathon, presented by Boost Mobile. Did anybody see this coming? 12.3 with an opportunity to shock the world. William on the drive. Pull up, pull up. She got it. She got it. Mississippi State has ended the streak. Okay, right about now, you're probably wondering, why are they showing this? If you're a UConn fan, you are definitely thinking that. But it was this moment that had the entire universe buzzing. The greatest upset of the greatest streak in all of sports. Now we not only hope or believe, we know that anything can happen. Every team that brings their heart and fights can win on any given night. So get ready, because these women will bust your bracket. All right, let's kick this thing off. Well, let's kick it off right. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish dealt with injuries all season long, but still in the hunt for a number one seed. We'll find out if they won the fight to be a top seed. And Mississippi State, I'm pretty sure all of Starkville may come unraveled by the time this reveal is over. First conference championship and women's history at Mississippi State goes to the Bulldogs. In Louisville, they've never been a one seed. They've never been a two seed, but they're seeking their third Final Four appearance in the last four seasons. This is the NCAA Selection Special presented by Capital One. Take a look at the debatable eight. These are the teams under final consider consideration according to the NCAA Selection Committee. They gave these out to us last night. And you take a look, it's alphabetical order, Buffalo, Creighton, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Purdue, Rutgers, USC, West Virginia. They're all fighting for the opportunity to enter the field of 64 and play for that trophy right there. That'll be found in Columbus, Ohio, when they tip off for the Final Four and National Championship for 2018. We don't know who's going to end up there, but we know where it all starts, and that's right here. Maria Taylor alongside Rebecca Lovo and Andy Landers. And we just saw Notre Dame, Louisville, Mississippi State. Give me the feelings or the vibes that the coaches and players in those parties have right now. Well, first in the debatable eight, they're just wondering if their name's going to appear on the board. For other teams like the ones we saw, it's not only the seed that they have, but the other teams that are in their region and what their potential matchups might be. You know, as a coach, you don't want to be in that debatable eight. There is no comfort zone in that area. If you start thinking you're in, it's the biggest bullet in the world to hear that you're not. And if you, if you start thinking you're not in, 
and you're not prepared, you know, you're still in a tough spot. So this is a tough position for teams and coaches to be in. All right, well, let's see who's in great positioning to stay in the hunt for a national championship. We start in the Albany region. The number one overall seed goes to the Connecticut Huskies in search of their 12th title, 11th consecutive Final Four appearance. They'll kick things off against St. Francis in stores, Connecticut. Your 8-9 matchup, it's going to be Miami. They've had four straight 21 seasons against who, Rebecca? Quinnipiac. <laughs> Remember, the Bobcats secured their first NCAA tournament win last season and advanced to the Sweet 16, and that was against Miami. There might be uh, some fun there in that first round matchup. Our 5-12 will be Duke, the Blue Devils, taking on Belmont, the second consecutive undefeated season for the Bruins. And you like this team, Rebecca. Oh, this is a Belmont team that I think can do some damage. They played Kentucky really well a season ago, only lost by three in the first round. Their top minutes, their top players are all upperclassmen. They make 10 threes a game. That can be difficult for a team like Duke that plays a lot of zone. Bart Brooks is the OVC Coach of the Year in his first season at Belmont, made the NCAA tournament every year in 11 seasons as an assistant on Doug Bruno's staff back at DePaul. But they're going to their third consecutive NCAA tournament, but they are 0 for all time in the tournament. Yeah, but as, as Rebecca mentioned, this is an experienced team, a senior-led team. They'll play better this year than ever before. As Rebecca mentioned also, a team that hangs its hat on the three ball, almost half of their shots are threes. All right, we're basically going to call them the Baby Warriors, then the Bruins. You guys are in. We're looking for your first tournament win. How about the Georgia Bulldogs? They will be hosting in Athens. That top 10 defense gets them a 25-win season, a chance to host the first and second rounds, and their first matchup will be against the Mercer Bears, who are making their very first tournament appearance and are on a 27-game win streak. Coach the Bulldogs, what do you like about them? Well, I, I like their inside players. Their two forwards are 6-2. They're almost identical in that they can score you from 15-20 all the way out to the three-point range. But they can also put it on the floor and drive it. They have guard-like skills at the forward position. They create matchup problems for their opponents. All right, Kalia Robinson leads the SEC in seventh and D1 with block shots. And here go the Bulldogs. Guess what? <laughs> You're hosting. I think they're excited in Athens. Yeah, they're excited. Everybody's excited, especially if you're playing at home. <laughs> they're excited because Coach Landers is on the road right now. That's right. <laughs> they're cheering because he's with us in the studio right now. Congratulations to the Bulldogs. We move on to the 6-11 matchup. We've got South Florida making their fourth consecutive NCAA tournament appearance. And then Buffalo, one of the teams in the debatable eight. You are in, Bulls. Congratulations. How about your host, they will be Florida State, and they will host in Tallahassee. It's their 14th tournament appearance under Sue Samrau, and they'll take on 14 seed Little Rock. The Trojans making their first tournament appearance since 2015. What about the 7-10 matchup? We've got Cal taking on Virginia. And their first tournament appearance since 2010. Congratulations to the Cavaliers who went 18 and 13 this season in the ACC. They get an at-large bid. And your two seed in Albany, that would be the South Carolina Gamecocks. Only three teams have successfully defended their national championship. The Gamecocks are looking to be the fourth, and they get NC State in Columbia. They'll need some help from a point guard named Ty Harris, right, Coach? Yeah, when you think of South Carolina, you typically think big. But Ty Harris is the stir that uh, is the straw that stirs the drink at South Carolina. She's excellent decision maker. She understands when to shoot the basketball, when to put it on the floor, and when to pull it off. But most of all, her value lies in her ability to run this basketball team and get her six assists a game to those bigs at South Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina, they have won four straight SEC tournaments championships. They are the first team to do so, and a lot of that is because of their Wonder Woman inside. Asia Wilson and Kara Lawson has more. There's no one else in the country that's done what she's done. Be the driving force behind a national championship team. There's no one else in the storied history of the SEC Conference that's done what she's done. Win the Player of the Year three times and lead her team to the SEC tournament title all four seasons. There's no one else in the country that has proven she can do it. Not shown us glimpses, not forced us into giving our best hypotheses, but actually proving it. Are you willing to bet against that?
Well, Asia Wilson is a star for South Carolina, the two seed, but they might meet the overall number one seed, Connecticut Huskies, who have relied on a young lady named Gabby Williams. 19 points, seven rebounds, six assists, and five steals. That was her stat line in the conference championship game, and that was just a regular day at the office. She's becoming the All-American Shiro. Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. It's the Geno signal. I gotta go. While there may not be enough female superheroes in the world, Gabby Williams is doing her part to change that in women's basketball. When you stand next to her, she's not that impressive. 5'11 post players aren't very intimidating. But with a two-step approach, she has a 36-inch vertical. And on the basketball court, that's when she puts her cape on. And it allows her to do things that no other player in the women's college game can do. She is an elite-level athlete. And it manifests itself on the offensive glass. She goes up in air where no one else resides, snatches offensive rebounds, and can find her teammates. She leads UConn in assists at five per game. Defensively, she is the best defender in the country. She can get her fingertips on basketballs that no one else can touch. Again, on the offensive glass, she is explosive inside. She can go get the basketball, quickly go back up and finish herself. And my favorite play from Gabby this season, she is four inches above the rim to get this steal. She corrals the basketball and is able to go the other way for the score. At only 5'11", this athletic ability of Gabby Williams is what makes her so difficult on the offensive and defensive ends of the floor. She's hard to guard and even better at defending. Gabby Williams and the Connecticut Huskies, they will start their play against St. Francis as the number one overall seed. Well, we've got plenty more to get to here in our tournament reveal, but if you want to add in your voice, then use the hashtag AskTheChair, tweet at ESPNW, and maybe we'll ask your question later on in the show as we hear from the NCAA Selection Committee Chair. Well, they're up out of their chairs in Nashville. The Belmont Bruins making their third straight NCAA tournament appearance. I think they all had to wear the same ripped jeans. I'm not sure. Maybe that was a part of the uniform. <laughs> Mercer, they're making their first NCAA tournament appearance, and they're dancing, laughing, and having a good time in Macon, Georgia. Final four. Here we come. Well, I've heard about these guys with the really long horns. What are they called? I know this. It's right on the tip of my brain. Uh, longhorns. Sure, Sam. Longhorns, right. Guess next thing you can tell me this bird running down the road is a road runner. Uh, that's exactly what that is, Chuck. Bet you're gonna tell me these weeds tumbling around are called tumbleweeds. Oh, uh, what else would they be called, Chuck? Charles. You know what, Chuck? Let's play the quiet game. <laughs> longhorns, right. The Miami Cuban with slow roasted pork loin.
Warriors at 8. Lakers Warriors at 10.30. Wednesday on ESPA. We are inspired by women who have risen. With us, there are no limits. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. The NCAA Women's Selection Special is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. What's in your wallet? We check back in with the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They've been a one seed seven times, still waiting to find out whether or not they'll fall on that one seed line. But they've dealt with plenty this season, and for the Fighting Irish, adversity is an understatement. My name is Brianna Turner, and I'm rehabbing an ACL. I'm Michaela Vaughn. I'm rehabbing an ACL. I'm Lily Thompson, and I'm rehabbing an ACL. I'm Michael Johnson, and I'm also rehabbing an ACL. Well, this has been a season full of adversity, taking one punch after another. Uh, just when we readjust to losing one player, somebody else would go down. And it was, it was very stressful to look at the team and know you have seven scholarship players. We can't get into foul trouble. Nobody else can get hurt or get the flu. We, we absolutely have a, a very small margin for error. You know, Lou Holtz always said it's not the load that breaks you down, it's the way you carry it. And, you know, I really tried to put on uh, a face of we're going to be fine, but, you know, it was, it was very, very hard at the end to come back and be regular season champs again. It was really rewarding. You guys, I'm so proud of you for what we've accomplished. And we've never hung our heads, we never felt sorry for ourselves. Well, you certainly can't spell miracle without ACL, but Notre Dame dealt with four ACL injuries this season and only lost three games. It all started with Brianna Turner, who went down in the second round of last year's NCAA tournament. She was the team's leading rebounder and second leading scorer and announced in October that she wouldn't rush back. Then there was the senior guard, Michael Johnson, who was injured during the preseason, and she was expected to fill the void left by Lindsay Allen, who was the ACC's all-time assist leader. Then Michaela Vaughn went down. She was the 13th ranked forward in the class of 2017, played in just six games in a Notre Dame uniform before tearing her ACL in a November practice. And finally, it was grad transfer Lily Thompson's dream of reaching her third Final Four, but it turned into a nightmare as Notre Dame scholarships fell from seven and having three walk-ons on the bench. So where will Notre Dame end up? We take you to the Spokane region and they are your Number one seed, Muffet McGraw, the ACC Coach of the Year after losing four players, but only losing three games this season. And two of those three losses came to Louisville. They will be taking on CSU Northridge. This is a Notre Dame team, Maria. Even without healthy point guards, they averaged close to 19 assists a game, which is good for eighth in the country. They are an unselfish team. The old adage, pass up a good shot for a great shot, that's what they do. You'll get it in the high-low, you'll get it in the pick and roll. They look to find one another as well as any other team in the country. 50% from the field this year, and it's because they make the good passes to get the good shots. Congratulations, Notre Dame. You have survived the injury bug, and for the eighth time in program history, you are a number one seed. Moving on along the bracket, we've got the 8-9 matchup. It's South Dakota State reached the second round last season. They'll be taking on Villanova, who has a win over Duke this year. And then the 5-12 matchup that brings us to DePaul, the 16th consecutive NCAA tournament appearance for the Blue Demons. And they have Oklahoma. You are in Sooners. It is not up for debate anymore. Remember, they were part of our debatable eight. And then our four seed will be Texas A&M, and they will host in College Station. They'll take on Drake in the first round. And it's the first game against the two-time uh, MVC tournament winners. That's exactly what your Drake Bulldogs are. And, Coach, they've got a great freshman at Texas A&M, right? Am I right? No, no, okay, you're gotcha. wrong. They've wrong. got the best freshman in the country in <laughs> Kennedy Carter. She is absolutely out of sight. She puts points on the board, 22 a game. She's a freshman. She leads all freshmen in scoring, ranks third in the country. 45-35 from the floor. She can score it in any manner you like. At the rim with creativity off the jump or from deep three, Kennedy Carter. All right, we see you, Anriel Howard, dancing, just leading the charge there in College Station. <laughs> They're more than excited to be hosting in College Station. What about Drake, though? The celebration continues for the Bulldogs in Iowa as well. 
There's a little baby in the front. <laughs> I love She's it. She's dancing too. <laughs> well, Drake, uh, they are well on their way with an opportunity to play for a national championship this season. Now we take you to the 6-11 matchup. It is LSU who won 11 SEC games this season. They'll take on Central Michigan's the first tournament appearance since 2013 for the Chippewas, and they have a program record 28 wins this season. Your three versus 14 matchup, it's Ohio State, which could start the end of their tournament in Columbus, Ohio, because that's where the final four is. And George Washington, Jen Rosati, you know something about her, right, Rebecca? The Colonials, they're in after winning the A-10 tournament. Jen Rosati led GW as the five seed to the A-10 championship, but they are going to have their hands full with Ohio State and Kelsey Mitchell. Kelsey Mitchell is one of the most lethal scorers in women's college basketball when she has the ball in her hand. She is so fast and explosive when she gets in the open floor. She is a terrific penetrator to the lane. She has deep range on her three. She was 41% from there, third in the nation this year at 24 and a half points a game. GW is a good defensive team. They're going to need all of it to slow down Kelsey Mitchell. Well, let's see how GW got here. It was a St. Joseph's who they had to play against in the A-10 Conference Championship. We saw Kelsey Mahoney knocking down the corner three. And uh, George Washington got 12 points from Mahoney. They celebrate the win, get the trophy, and they were one of the first tickets that we actually punched in the tournament. And here's the reaction of George Washington here today. And they knew they were getting in. <laughs> But how about that? The fifth seed in the A-10 tournament, and they beat Dayton, the number one seed, and then beat St. Joe's. Congratulations again to George Washington and my buddy, Jen Rosati. There you go. He, she always has to say nice things about Jen Rosati. We've learned that. All right, moving right along, we've got Green Bay, the seventh seed. They won their seventh Horizon League championship in eight years. They'll be taking on Minnesota, another one of those debatable eight teams. We found you. You are in. Who was your two seed, though? It's going to be the Oregon Ducks. They've had a program record 30 wins, secured their first Pac-12 tournament title in program history, and now they're the two seed in Spokane, and they'll be going against the Seattle Redhawks. But, Coach, you like the pick-and-roll game, right? I just like Oregon's offense, and they are so good in the pick-and-roll. Here you see Maite Cazorla and Ruthie Hebert. She is second in the nation in field goal percentage. They run the pick-and-roll so well, getting her the basketball. And here it's Sabrina Ionescu, another great player in the pick-and-roll with Hebert. But you can spread the floor when you have great three-point shooters, and Oregon has that, and Lexi Bando. She's second in the country, 47%. Sabrina Ionescu, elite level vision. She can deliver the basketball. You better be ready to defend the pick and roll when you go against Oregon. Well, congratulations to the Ducks. There they go. I love that's a good selection show party, too. They reached the Elite Eight last season as a 10 seed, so we knew that great things were on the horizon for them. Oh, no question. This is a team that's up and coming. It's still a young basketball team, but man, can they score? I am so <laughs> impressed with the way they create offense, the way they manufacture points. Yeah, they shoot 50% from the field and 40% from three. All right, let's update the debatable eight so far and take a look at the ends. We've got Buffalo already in, Minnesota, and Oklahoma. So, guys, there's one spot left for the debatable eight. So sit tight. We will see who else will add in from that grouping. And we will continue to walk you through the field of 64 on your selection show. You're watching the ESPN, ESPN Challenge. Challenge. Challenge.
Coast. It's driving me out of my mind. Presented by Capital One. She just gets buckets. She can get them any way she wants. 47 against Ohio State. 38 against Georgia Tech. 36 against Notre Dame. The shot is true. The fate is real. The smooth taste on the outside belies the killer that lingers underneath the surface. Defender at your own risk. She's dirty. You don't want no problems, and if you don't want those problems, don't come at Asia Durr, because she has done nothing but be phenomenal all season long, the ACC Player of the Year. All right, so we are two regions down, two to go. Are you guys still feeling good? Ready to go. Feeling good. <laughs> all right, we take you now to the Lexington Regional. And uh, I don't know if there's a surprise here, but congratulations to the Louisville Cardinals. They have never been a one seed or a two seed, but they won their first ACC tournament title and started the season 20 and 0 and have, like you just saw, the ACC Player of the Year. Coach, but she also has some excellent teammates. Well, she really does. We hear about Heinz Allen and here she is playing it inside. She has been Durr's running mate, but in the ACC tournament, it was Sam Furing who stepped up with 16 points a game, five rebounds a game, shot lights out at 64% when Sam Furing plays the way she played in the ACC tournament. Louisville is really good. Yeah, and Heinz Allen, she was the ACC tournament MVP, averaging 16 points and eight rebounds. We take you now to the 8-9 matchup in the Lexington region. It's Marquette back-to-back -back NCAA appearances for the first time since 1997 in Dayton. Just one conference loss this season. They are an at-large bid out of the A-10 because of that upset that we saw with George Washington winning the tournament. Your 5-12 matchup, Missouri, 24 wins this season. That's the most since the 80s, and they'll take on Florida Gulf Coast, and that's their fifth A-Sun tournament championship in seven years. But there's a player for Missouri that everyone should know, and her name is Sophie Cunningham. Yeah, down south we call her Sweet Sophie because she's got a stroke as sweet as any in the country. She's the third leading three-point percentage shooter in America. But one of the things I like about Sophie Cunningham, she plays with swag. She motivates her teammates. They follow her lead. And Missouri has been excellent all year long. Did Coach just say swag? Swag. He said swag and sweet in the same sense. I thought he was going to say we call her Sweet Sophie because we like sweet tea in the South. But congratulations to the Missouri Tigers. You're a five seed. And your four versus 13 brings us to Stanford. They will be a host, and they'll take on Gonzaga in the first round, who won their second straight West Coast Conference tournament title, had the WCC Player of the Year in Jill Barta. And then your 6-11 matchup brings us to Oregon State, who'll be looking for their third straight Sweet 16 appearance. We've had some great success in the NCAA tournament, while the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky are back-to-back -back Conference USA title holders and also boast a win over those Missouri Tigers. So it could be interesting should they meet up in this bracket. Meanwhile, Tennessee taking on Liberty. They will be hosting in Knoxville the first and second round, and they've got some senior leaders with them. They need some senior leaders, Maria, because they have three freshmen on the floor, oftentimes at the same time. So Jamie Nard and Mercedes Russell are extremely important to Tennessee. They ground this basketball team. Russell, a do-it-all fall or do-it-all center who can score from about 10 feet on in. An excellent rebounder shoots it about 60% from the floor. These two anchor the Tennessee lineup. Oh, y'all better get up and jump or do something. Congratulations to the <laughs> Tennessee Lady Vols. They will be hosting. You saw Mercedes Russell there. 45 career double-doubles. That's tied with Candace Parker, so a great player to watch throughout this tournament. Your 7-10 matchup. It was a bubble team from last year, and they went on to win the WNIT. That's Michigan and then Northern Colorado. Let's go, Bears. Northern Colorado had a school record 26 wins this season. Your two seed. That will be the Baylor Lady Bears. They're currently on a 28-game winning streak and have Big 12 Player of the Year, Kalani Brown, and they'll be going against Grambling. And they have the fourth player to ever have. But one thing that Baylor's battling through is the loss of their star point guard, Christy Wallace. She tore her ACL in the regular season finale, was averaging career-high 12 points per game. But then a freshman guard, Alexis Morris, has just stepped in, completely stepped up, 
And Morris had 19 points, just one turnover in 40 minutes of play in Baylor's Big 12 championship win over Texas, and that's impressive. Well, that was the big question going into the Big 12 tournament. How would Baylor respond without Christy Wallace? Alexis Morris was a stud. She shot 60% from three, 50% from the field. In crunch time against Texas, she made a big time three. She showed tremendous poise for a freshman in that spot. They have to feel pretty good of where they are right now. All right, so they are the two seed in the Lexington Regional, but your one seed, and for the first time ever, the Louisville Cardinals will enter the NCAA tournament as a one seed. We welcome in their head coach now, Jeff Walls. They had their first ACC tournament title this year, coach, and now you're a one seed for the first time. I mean, how does it feel to see your name released on that seed line? Uh, we're really excited about the opportunity. Uh, you know, you've been wait we've been waiting for a week here, just trying trying to figure out where we're going to go, who who we're going to play, uh, and we're excited about the opportunity to host the first two at home. And you know, we know there are going to be two very good ba ba basketball games. And if we're fortunate enough to advance, we'd get the opportunity to go play in Lexington, which would be fantastic for our fans. Coach, how important was it for you to win the ACC tournament in the fashion that you did with some of your more support players playing key roles uh, and, and until Asia Durr could finally find her shot in that last game? Well, I, I thought it was a great uh, th uh, three days for us as an entire team. Uh, you know, a lot of people now are coming out focusing on Asia, trying to stop her, but I think everybody... Because, hey, anything can happen on the basketball court. And these young ladies right here been cooking up an upset all year long. All year long. All year long. I don't know if I'm out of order for this, but I'm so grambling I got to do it. Before we leave, we got to throw one finger up and sing the alma mater, man. We're going to one, two, three. Oh, Go, Lady Tiger! It's gonna be some dread.